one you'd have when guys aren't around? Yeah, well, I thought you and Al were like a permanent fixture. No, well, we are, but it's so good when you can just be stupid and be like yourself. You know what I mean? <laughs> Speak for yourself. Oh, shut up. Hey, notice how quiet it is? Well, there's no music. walking sooner? Well, I thought it would have been better to stay with the car. Who would have thought somebody would have come along by now? What if we get lost? How can we get lost along a roadway? Well, what if someone awful comes along? Why don't you stop what ifing? We just start walking down the road, okay? Stop being a wuss. Hey, do you think we're gonna be all right? Of course we'll be all right. What do you think's gonna happen to us? Oh my God, it's a truck! Oh no, it's him! So we're gonna run? <gasps> Where? Anywhere! They're coming! You girls need some help. Cops haven't heard nothing, hospital hasn't heard nothing. Irene, I know that you're worried, but they're only a couple of hours late, and you know what kids are like? Yes, it could be any number of reasons. What, like a head on with a semi? Well, I was thinking of something much less dramatic, like uh, running out of petrol. Donald's quite right. It's probably something perfectly simple. Probably sitting by the side of the road trying to work out how to turn the flaming headlights off. Yeah, you're right. I know you're right. I just can't help worrying, but... I still don't get it. How could we flatten the battery by playing music? Because your generators had it and it wasn't recharging properly. Oh, great. So much for my date with Alex. Who cares about Alex? What about Irene? She's going to be having kittens by now. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds serious. Right, we'll jumpstart the car and I'll follow you in case you have any more trouble. Oh, thanks. That'll be cool. That'll be great. Thanks heaps. What else are we here for if not to help one another? I could kick myself. I should have made Selena tell me exactly where she was going. Got her to draw me a map if she had to. Come on, Irene, you weren't to know. That's beside the point, love. I should have had more sense. Look, are you sure she didn't say nothing to you about what she was doing and where she was going? Well, not that I can remember. I mean... I'm really, really, really sorry, Irene. Well, so you should be, you little horror. I've been worried sick. Yeah, I know we couldn't help it. Because the car broke down. Yeah, there was no phone. We couldn't find it. Well, there's one here, so get on it quick, smart, and ring Pippa. She's been worried sick about you. Well, can I ring Alex? Just ring Pippa first. And as for you, Missy, you are grounded. Irene! And don't you dare ask me for a loan of the charger again, because there is no way in the world you're going to get it. But that's not fair. Fair or not, that's the way it is, so get used to it. Uh, forgive me for interrupting, but it really wasn't their fault. It was their generator. Could happen to anyone. Who the hell are you? Um, this is Saul. He, he's the one who found us. He got the car going. If it wasn't for him, we'd be stranded in the middle of nowhere. Oh, well, thank you very much. Um, Saul, was it? You must be Irene. Glad I could help. Uh, Selina knew you'd be concerned. We did try and phone, but... Well, something, I suppose. I think she was more concerned for you than for herself. Really? Oh, love, I'm, I'm sorry I flew off the handle. It wasn't me. It was a worry talking. Yelling, you mean? So, am I still grounded? Well, no. What about the charger? We'll talk about that later. Promise? I'd better go. Yeah. Oh, look, I'm so sorry. Can I offer you a cup of tea or something? Sorry, there's nothing stronger. <laughs> Not for me, thanks. I'm late enough as it is. Thanks again, Saul. Yeah, thanks, Saul, for everything. Yes, Saul? Oh, you must be Al Stewart. Yes, Alf will do. Geez, this is a first. Not too often a tradesman turns up early. Oh, I don't like to keep my customers waiting. Oh, good. All right, I'll show you what needs doing. Just a bit of rot in the skirting board, and I reckon some of it might have got into the joist. Oh, that's easily replaced. Good. I'll let you get on with it, then. If you need anything, give us a hoy. I won't be far away. Uh, thanks again for the work. No worries. Do a good job there, and there's plenty more where that came from. Hi, what are you doing here? Selena. I had a feeling I'd see you again. You did? How come? Oh, just a feeling. Yeah? Huh? Some people you meet and you know they're going to be a part of your life. They're special. 
I knew I'd see you again. I'm not special. Oh, but you are. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> He's just amazing. The way he looked at me, it was, it was like he could read my mind. He's a bit weird. You reckon? I reckon he's really nice. Hey, Chloe. Oh, what? Uh, you know what you said about not wanting to go out with Jack. Uh, that was all bull, wasn't it? Get lost, Curtis. Come on, I saw the look he gave me this morning. Dream on. I said I wasn't interested in him, and I'm not. <laughs> sure. I'm not, Curtis. Yeah, yeah, look, never kid a kid. Leave me alone. Uh, Chloe, you... Just leave me alone. Hi. Selena, what brings you here? Oh, I just thought I'd come and say hello. I'm glad you came. I wanted to talk to you. Oh, yeah, what about? You. You walk with me? Did you really hire Saul Bennett? Well, why not? He's cheap, he's reliable, and from what I've seen so far, his work's top-notch. I never expected you to be so open-minded about the man. Open-minded? Oh, I suppose he has got a few funny ideas about food. Yeah, and, of course, he, uh, he does run that commune, the other side of Yabby Creek. What? The children of Saul. Yes, that's the one. Oh, they don't say that when they answer the phone. Oh, no, I'm not surprised. I've heard he does quite a lot of good rehabilitating young drug addicts. Yes, I've heard that too. I've also heard there's a, there's a bit of a question mark about him and his so-called family. What sort of a question mark? That it's a bit of a cult. Oh, I don't know about that, and I don't care. Provided he turns up on time and does what he says he's going to do and doesn't expect me to wear a caftan, I'm not going to complain. Oh, well, fair enough. I mean, it is a free country. You know, whilst I've been threatening to drag young Duncan fishing, I think the Sabo might be the guy. I think that's a very good idea. I'd love to see you spend more time with him, and I don't think you'll mind being dragged at all. He better not, or he's no son of mine. <laughs> there. I know you, sir. I know you very well. I know you've suffered. I know your feeling of loss. I know you're searching for answers. How? You and I have a bond. You're not afraid. You want to know the truth. You've had an experience, a special experience that no one understands. Yeah. Are you ready to talk about it? Yeah. Get away from it, do you hear? And leave her alone. You've got no right being here. I work here. Would you want to deny me the opportunity to earn a living? I didn't think you needed to earn a living. Isn't that what your little family of zombies is for? What's going on? Look, I'll explain it to you later. Let's just get out of here, OK? No, I'm not going anywhere till you tell me what's going on. Is there are things you don't know about, Selena? Well, tell me and I will know. You're just going to have to trust us on this one. This guy is bad news. Yeah, well, he seems right to me. Selena, we're doing you a favour. You don't know what you're getting yourself into here. What is wrong with you? I'm not getting myself into anything. We're talking, that's all. I'd hoped that after all this time, we might have been friends. Friends? That's a laugh. You're nothing to me. I'm your father. That should mean something. Not as far as I'm concerned. Are you coming with us or not? He's your dad? Selena. No, I'm not getting into any heavy family business. Fine. Let's go. I don't understand. Why didn't you tell me about it before? Well, I've been trying to forget him most of my life. It's not exactly something I like talking about. I just thought when you said that he was dangerous and that he manipulated people that he... You thought I was going on local gossip. Oh, no, believe me, it was all painful experience. Oh. My mum was 18 when she first met him. She didn't get on too well with her parents and she just moved out of home. Did she know who he was? I mean, had she ever heard of the children of Saul? I'm sorry for sticking me bib in, but you're not talking about that sore bloke, are you? Take a seat, Irene. You should probably hear this too, I reckon. Well, she didn't know who he was, just that he was this nice guy who was taking an interest in her. He said he understood her problems. She wasn't the only one looking for answers. Sounds like 70s. Oh, believe me, love, it still goes on. Just pick up the paper sometime. Yeah, well, he said he had this farm where young people could find themselves, get away from the pressures that the world was putting on. She went with him. He said she was special. She didn't know she was just one more in a long list. Well, what happened? Well, by the time she realised that half the women on the commune had had children by him, she was already pregnant herself. Oh, my God. 
Are you sure that's all you want? Yeah, I never drink coffee, thanks. And neither should you. <laughs> Why? <laughs> the body's a temple. It should be kept pure. So, um, why was Alex so upset? It's a very sad and painful story. Why? You ask a lot of questions. Sorry. No, don't get me wrong, I admire it. Alex was only eight when his mother died, and his aunt and uncle decided that they wanted him for themselves. They took me to court and won custody. But how could they? You're his dad. I live in a commune, and I won't conform to society's expectations. It wasn't difficult to turn the judge against me. But that's terrible. Society is frightened of people who dare to be different, Selina. What really hurt was the way his aunt and uncle poisoned his mind against me. What did they say? They told him I was evil and that I destroyed his mother's life. So how did your mum get away? Well, it was building up for a long time. I was about six. My aunt and uncle came to visit us one day. They weren't allowed on the property. We had to go and speak to them at the gate. Anyway, Uncle John gave me these sweets. But Saul didn't allow that sort of thing. Everything had to be natural, you know, untainted. But I wanted those sweets. I wasn't giving them up for anything. So he locked me in a cupboard for a couple of days to think about it. That was all Mum needed. We were gone by the following night. And he didn't try and come after you? Well, he didn't know we were gone till the following day. After that, people came around to my aunt and uncle's where we were staying two or three times a week, trying to get Mum to come back. Sometimes they'd turn up at school, or sometimes he'd just be there on his own. I was terrified they were going to take me away. I tried to see him a few times, but he seemed so terrified of me. I couldn't put him through that any longer. That's just so cruel. Well, they wanted him, and they were bound by convention and the rules of this sick society. And it is sick, Selina. You must have seen that. Anyone as intelligent as yourself. It's been poisoned. The way your body's been poisoned by that coffee. And the terrible thing is, nobody's doing anything about it. Governments and politicians are always talking about solutions, but they're not actually interested in finding any. And so people have given up. You must have seen that. That's the real tragedy. People believe there's nothing they can do, and it's not true. Everyone can make a difference. They can make all the difference in the world. What the hell are you doing here? I invited him. Well, you can go ahead and uninvite him. Thank you for the water and the chat. Oh, uh, look, I'm really sorry. There's no need. Good night. How could you be so rude? And how could you invite that man into my house? What is wrong with you? If it wasn't for him, me and Shannon could still be stuck in the middle of nowhere. Selena, from what I've heard, you might have been better off. Apparently, he's got some very strange ideas. Well, they only seem strange to people who are too narrow-minded to know any different. Have you? Yep. That's it for me in Summer Bay. For the time being, anyway. We've got to go, Selena. Oh, well, you go. I'll catch up later. But we're going No, to... I want to talk to Saul. Um, you know that visualisation technique you told me? It, it was amazing. It really worked. I'm just sorry I won't be around. There's so much more I could show you. Like what? Selena, tell me, are you fulfilled? <laughs> Sometimes. Maybe. I don't really know. <laughs> it makes me sad. Because when I look into your eyes, I see such potential. You have a beautiful soul. Yeah, I wish you could teach me more, too. Why don't you give me your phone number? And I'll let you know when we're having our next meeting. You might like to come. Yeah, sure.